taking you around the side. Here is the pumpkin from the other side. There are quite a few pumpkins growing. I decided to put them in my produce bags. I'm hoping this will at least deter the wildlife a little bit. Now I have a funny story about this pumpkin over here, which is getting very big very fast. Um, so I had this pumpkin protected by this pot and it was raining for like three or four days and then when I came out to check it <laughs> it was stuck in the pot and I had to cut it open to get it out now over here is our corn crop which I think is ready to be pulled out nothing left I think we have some wildlife come and finish off the, un the unformed corn cob so this is our watermelon patch um, I found this it's a sugar baby variety by the way and I found this watermelon here and I really wanted to protect it it's gotten quite big and so far it's working like nothing's come and eaten it or anything put it in a produce bag so there's a couple of rock melons I'm protecting under there there's one here so four five six there's also one here I'll open one up and show you guys so they're looking like this at the start, I thought they were like watermelon, but they're rock melons. They're getting there. Our uh, Vietnamese meat is getting very big. It's grew out of the soil. I think it is a broccolini. The net is very messy. <laughs> because of the net, it made it really hard to kind of do things. And also, um, all our tomatoes grew so much fruit that these bamboo sticks which I so tie tirelessly put up fell like look at this one over here so this was upright once upon a time but look at all these tomatoes the steak just couldn't handle it so it's fallen and I've just let it fall so I've noticed that if I pick the tomatoes as soon as they're red before the night comes so if every night there are no red tomatoes then it helps so animals come less and I get more <laughs> which means instead of doing my harvest in the morning I might be doing them in the afternoon cherry tomatoes over here they've gone very messy <laughs> as they do I don't know if I filmed this but I had a um, cucumber plant trailing across this, it died, don't know what happened, I had a deficiency or it wasn't getting watered enough but the leaves went yellow and I couldn't be bothered because I've got plenty more here. So this is our other cucumber plant, it's a mess because tomatoes are everywhere but here's a cucumber. <laughs> have some beans again. Being inf infiltrated with tomatoes, next season I'm going to make my tomatoes way more organized. <laughs> so I just picked out some, pulled out some beetroots. Still got some soil on them. And we've also got a big basket of tomatoes. I really need to figure out how to use these quickly. So hey guys, um, I just did a harvest in our garden so I picked a whole bunch of stuff I'm gonna go through what I picked today um, so there are two zucchinis this one's got a little scab on it I feel like I'm doing one of those um, shopping haul videos but they're not really my thing but this is <laughs> so two zucchinis they're from our second zucchini plant so not the main one um, I also picked this rock melon Sadly, it's not ready. I decided to bring it inside. So basically, I think like rats or possums got to the vine and they bit it off. And yeah, I think zucchinis do. I'm sorry, not zucchinis. I think rock melons don't ripen once the vine breaks. So I thought I'd bring it inside and then like deal with it because I didn't want to leave it outside in case the possums and rats got to it and realized how tasty they were. And came back for more and actually surprisingly I actually was protecting this with a bag so one of my grocery bags and you can see over here that they actually bit through my poor bag so see there's like holes here yeah 
I don't know what animal did it, but it was very sad. And they broke the drawstring as well. Okay, so actually what I'm gonna be doing with this bag now is I've been collecting, I've been harvesting Toro for his dog hair. And I'm gonna try and put some dog hair in here. And I'm also gonna put some peppermint oil on this bag and I'm gonna hang it outside because I heard that rats at least don't like peppermint oil and um, possums don't really like dog hair or the smell of it because it's like a predator. So I'm gonna see if that helps. But I'm also going to try and find a better net. Yeah. Okay, and I'm also, I picked some oregano leaves. So I'm gonna be making pizza tonight. Um, and then there's another cucumber. Might have to start giving them to neighbors because we've got like six cucumbers sitting around waiting to be eaten. Another cucumber, one strawberry, and I have quite a few tomatoes. So I'm gonna try and collect as many ripe tomatoes as I can. And then once I have enough, so hopefully like three kilos, I'm gonna make some more pasta sauce. So what I've been doing is I've been collecting eggshells over here and I heard rats don't like peppermint oil so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop or two of peppermint oil in each of these eggshells and I'm going to place them around like my pumpkins and my rock melon and my watermelon and hopefully that deters them. So over here we have my eggshells which I've been collecting and also 100% pure peppermint oil, which I got from the supermarket. I'm gonna hopefully see if this prevents the rat problem. So I place the eggshells nearby all of the fruit over here. And I've also like, oh, there's Taurus dog hair, which by the way, I put drops of peppermint oil on all of the bags as well. I don't know if they'll work, but hopefully it does. Good morning everybody, um, it is day 7 of kombucha brewing, there is my kombucha hidden behind a tea towel because I was worried that it was too bright, anyway, oh and there's also a layer of like cloth around it as well. Um, I'm gonna have a taste test and see if it's ready for the second fermentation, so very exciting, hopefully it hasn't gone too vinegary, let's go ahead and see what it's like. So over here, here's my kombucha. It is looking really disgusting. <laughs> you can see all of those yeast particle thingos, the brown parts over here, over here. There's the mama scoby and on top, which looks a bit like mold, is the new scoby. With much trouble, I managed to tip myself a little bit of kombucha. Um, this is the first fermentation, so it doesn't have any flavoring yet. Um, the scoby looks disgusting, <laughs> so I'm like really scared to try it. Um, it actually smells still a bit sweet, so maybe it's not ready yet. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, it is not ready. So, me again. Um, I've been told that my kombucha possibly could be ready, so... I'm just gonna go ahead, since I've got like three scobies now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my um, second, prepare my second fermentation, just seeing how it goes. Um, so I've got, let's, na -na 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 -na. <laughs> I've got my kombucha jar and my scoby hotel, and I have these bottles here for my second fermentation. Um, I've got a plastic. Uh, why do I always have brain clouds when I'm talking to the video camera? Plastic, what do you call these? Funnels, funnels, oh my god, okay. Plastic funnel, little filter thing. I want to get a silicon one, but I couldn't find any, so this will have to do. Okay, so, filter is in, so I don't get any weird yeast particles. Gonna unwrap this baby. Okay. Probably should have read some instructions. I can't find them. I tend to be the type of person to wing it. Okay. So there it is. Not very sanitary. Um, 
My friend told me to take the scoby out, but I'm a bit lazy, so I'm just gonna keep it in there and pour. All right. This is exciting. My first, ooh. My first batch of kombucha. So guys, um, it's basically one cup of kombucha to one tablespoon of fruit. So I'm just gonna guess this is like three cups. I'm gonna do three tablespoons. I have this like light cheese in syrup. By the way guys, I have no idea if what I am doing is right. Bit of an experiment here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put this through my Nutribullet. <laughs> so that it's all blended and then I'm gonna tip some in I think I'll do a little more in one bottle and a little less in the other and then see which one tastes better so yeah be right back <laughs> all right so I'm back now um, here is my lychees blended um, so I blended about seven lychees because they look like they were just under a tablespoon each I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> That's why I'm making kombucha, guys. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday afternoon, and I decided to grow some microgreens out of my life cycle kit. So I've had this for a while now. Um, oof, my face. Um, it's Life Cycle, which is a brand I think based out of Byron Bay and they do these grow kits which are really cool. It comes with coffee cups and seeds and um, like coffee soil or something, just some like seed propagating soil. So I've just filled them up with the soil and I put the seeds on top and I'm gonna, oh and I covered it with more soil and then I've watered it. So I'm just gonna keep them on the windowsill and see how they go. I think it should only take like five days and then you'll have like a layer of greens on top which you can snip off and eat and enjoy in your salads or whatever you have. So update on the oyster mushrooms, very exciting. This morning I woke up and all these little baby ones have popped out. It looks really gross right now but I promise you in a few days they're going to be huge. Today is Wednesday after Labor Day, I'll have to check the date but the oyster mushrooms going very very well have a look at this also very happy are the microgreens um, I've been turning them every few days so they kind of grow straight I think I might harvest these soon and put them in a salad so please ignore my uh, scoby hotel back there but the oyster mushrooms are coming along really really great I think it's time to harvest actually so let's do this on video <laughs> Very cool. Only two days and there are these huge zucchinis out here. That's nuts. How funny is this? These two zucchinis are humongous. I think they weigh more than a kilo each. Guys, when I say netting, this is the kind of netting I'm thinking of doing. It's my parents' garden. Very cool. Morning. So the vine over here has died back, so I decided to harvest these. Just wanted to share with you a pumpkin update. So there are two very big pumpkins over here, which is really exciting. Um, I think it's only been like two or three weeks that these have been growing, and they're getting really huge. These days, it seems like garden shopping is a lot more successful than shopping at the supermarket. Hey, 